That's right, today we're bringing you the big boy. Today, I'm going to show you a Desert Eagle Mark 19 and 44 Magnum. So, let's go ahead, hop in, and we will show you what I think. Okay, for starters, this has to be one of the coolest guns I have ever owned. I picked this up on a private purchase. I've had this for actually about a year now. So uh, I've taken it to the range a few times, played with it, modified it a little bit, added some things to it. And all in all, I love this thing. I mean, who wouldn't? It's in every single 80s action movie, early 90s. You see them all over the place. But let's go ahead and we'll just start off, like we do all the videos, with what you get in the box. Of course, you get the firearm. Uh, this one came with one magazine. I don't know if when you purchase it brand new if you get one mag or two mags, but you get a nice hard box. Inside, you'll see some extra things I have here. Uh, it's just a very simple box, nothing special. Inside of that, you get your Magnum Research lock. You get this bubble pack with some paperwork. Get an adjustment tool. You actually get on CD, owner's manual. It's kind of cool, CD, DVD. Uh, you do get proper grip and stance, which I will tell you, this is something very important to learn with these, is having a proper grip and stance and such on it. Because if you don't, you'll run into issues. Uh, you also get a thank you from the business for the purchase. Warranty card. You can order parts and accessories through the mail. NRA paperwork. And you get operating instructions. A decent little two colored uh, booklet. Then you get Exterior care instructions. Gives you an idea what to do. It's just one, one sided. But that's all the paperwork and everything you get in the box. Now, what I do want to go over first is the upgrades that we did to it. I did purchase the wraparound hoe grips, they're about 50 bucks. You, the original grips that come on it. It's the original Magnum Research grips that came with it. And you'll see they clip around the side in here. You see how I got those little hooks? And then there's a screw that fastens in the back, and that's how it secures the grip to it. So you can see the difference. 
trust me, I like these a lot more. They're a lot more comfortable. Not saying the old grips are bad. It's just that wrap around recoil absorbing rubber is pretty nice. Another upgrade for these are the Chijigan night sights, standard. Uh, now there was one issue with these. Let's go ahead and open it up and show you what I'm talking about. Uh, here's your original, just flat rear sight. The trigger gun's installed on the firearm already. Now, of course, with the trigger gun sights, you get warranty cards, all of that. That's something I have noticed with the Desert Eagles is the barrel, the front portion here. You have different front sights and different dovetails. So this one actually did not fit in it. I still have the sight, but it doesn't fit on the firearm. I've asked a couple gunsmiths. Uh, they need a different one. And I've had trouble finding it on any sort of website, the proper front Trigigon sight for this firearm. So right now I have a front uh, bladed sight, or just a front plain sight and rear Trigigon. So it's, it's a work in progress. Another nice thing you can get for these, and this is absolutely gorgeous holster. This is a, uh, an, a the Masters holster, it's Italian leather. Uh, Cause you all know how I love my leather pancake holsters. This actually came with it in the deal when I purchased it. Beautiful eagle embellished. You can smell, you can smell the leather. It just mm, smells amazing, but it also fits this gigantic firearm almost perfectly. Look at that. So then you can carry it on your hip if you need to. Of course, carrying this is kind of <laughs> awkward unless you're trying to make a statement. But now that we've gone past the accessories, we'll go to the magazines. Did purchase a couple extras from their website. They're more expensive, but I would suggest getting the actual manufacturer brand magazines. The, uh, I think it's Metgar. Whichever ones are the cheaper ones, they have feeding issues. And uh, they've actually discontinued them from what I can tell on the website. So I just order Magnum Research ones directly from Magnum Research. This one is in 44 Magnum. You'll see I have magazines loaded for purposes of the video. I keep the empty one in there. You'll see it is clear. You'll see here, nice, beautiful stainless steel, kind of a brushed stainless steel. You do have the ported barrel. You have the rail on top and bottom. This is a very heavy firearm. We'll take a look at those three dot sights I was telling you about. Gives you an idea there. The wraparound grip, which I have large hands, so fits my hands perfectly well. This fits my hand great, actually just because I have large hands. I can easily get to the slide stop. I can get to the safety if I adjust slightly. Now that it is pretty stiff, that safety, but you kind of want that. This is a single action only. So you notice, safety's on, nothing to worry about. Even with the safety off, still nothing. It's single action only, like a 1911. So you have to pull the hammer back, which is very easy to do. And then you have a trigger, pull. It's a very easy trigger. Let me get this to refocus, there we go. There's nothing to it, it's almost a hair trigger. There's no, there's no, not even any reset. Single action trigger, which are always fun. But it's made with the intention to carry, cocked and locked. Safety on, hammer back, ready to go. And you'll see you can drop it, kind of like a single action army. Uh, let's see, you do have the rear serrations, which are very big, very deep, easy to get to. Doesn't have any front ones, but this comes apart a little differently and cycles differently. So you have your giant slide up here, and you'll see that 
It's a little bit different than most pistols because you have the full open action here. Barrel stays right here, it doesn't really move. And you'll notice that bolt looks a lot like an AR bolt, doesn't it? Interesting. Slide stops there. Uh, one thing I would suggest, I know some people say you can, I kind of baby the guns a little bit. You can drop this to uh, drop the slide. If you have any uh, bullets in the magazine inside of it, but if it's empty, like this one is, I would say just let it home so you don't damage it. I'm just very particular like that when it comes to these. But all in all, an amazing firearm that I love, and it's absolutely beautiful. Just look at that. These are the kind of things you only see in movies. And I'm just happy to be able to actually get my hands on one and own one. But we'll cut away. Um, shooting this, what I was talking about, is a little tricky. Now, uh, you'll see a lot of people that get failure to feeds, failure to go back into battery, things like that. What happens, number one, I know you saw I have copper ammunition in here, or yeah, on the front. It generally wants hollow points or soft tipped ammo. Me doing this was me bringing it to the range and testing it. It is a little finicky with this kind of ammunition. You do want soft point. Now, uh, a lot of times people have issues that I noticed after taking this to the range with a bunch of friends, teaching them how to shoot it, watching their mistakes they were making, and trying to recreate them myself. What I found out was not only the ammunition, but your grip and how firm you're keeping your wrist when you're shooting this. If you limp wrist this, this thing is a huge bolt coming back and forth here on the top. If you limp, there, limp wrist this and you do not keep a nice, secure, steady grip and let the recoil hit your wrist, but not too much, when it comes back, it'll stop right about there. And it won't go back into battery, so you have to smack it. You'll actually see in the range footage I'm going to show today, I had to do that once because I limp wristed it. But that is part of the issue. Also, when you have a grip on this, this slide is touchy. So when you're shooting it, you're used to your normal, your normal grip. Keep in mind where your thumbs are. I've done it before. My thumb was touching the slide when it cycles. It didn't hurt or anything, but because my thumb was touching that, it stopped it from going into battery because my thumb held it back just enough not to go fully back. So I go for more of a revolver grip when I shoot this. I keep it down. I keep my hands away from that slide so I don't have any issues. You can even adjust it a little. Just keep your, I keep my thumbs really low just in case. Not pushing on the bottom of this because I don't want to catch that slide, but like I said, revolver grip and you should be fine. Just make sure it's a nice steady grip on it. It's not going to fly out of your hands when you're shooting it, but you just want a nice steady grip so that slide actually functions correctly. This thing wants to be held firmly. It wants your love. It wants your hugs. <laughs> so just look at it that way and you'll be good. But we'll cut away to some range footage now, uh, kind of show you how it handles, how the shooting goes with this. I absolutely love shooting this thing. And uh, when we come back, we'll show you disassembly, taking it apart, cleaning it, things like that, how that would work. And it's a little bit different too, but familiar in other ways. You'll see, but we'll be right back.
Okay, hope you enjoyed that range footage. <laughs> but uh, what we're gonna do now is show you the disassembly. And it's kind of a mixture of a few different things. Uh, it comes apart kind of like an old school, I'd say like kind of like a P64 a little bit. And it also comes apart kind of like a Beretta a little bit. So what you need to know, first as usual, make sure it's empty, no magazine, no rounds in the chamber, good to go. All right, so first thing first, what you're gonna wanna know, go ahead and take care of that. You're gonna take notice of this here. You have a little button right there. Let me see if I can get this to focus on that. There we go, you have a little button, goes in and out, and you have a little lever lever. You're gonna push that button, and you're gonna drop that lever. See that? There's a reason I was holding it up so it didn't shoot off all the way. Once that happens, it actually releases, oh, I'm hitting the bubble popping here. It releases the barrel, which you can pull all the way off. But you'll notice there's a little track in there for that barrel. So you're gonna just pull it forward ever so slightly and it comes right off. Then once that's out, you can remove this little guy here. I don't always know the correct terms for these. You should know that by now. So let's let's show you the internals here and how that works. You have this little piece here. It actually connects the two. It's the, um, I believe it's kind of like a piston or something like that. I don't know. You can tell me down in the comment section. I'm sure someone will call me out for saying the wrong thing. But you'll notice you have a two, a dual guide rod and recoil spring assembly in here. That's for all the recoil you have coming into it. So take that off. You're just going to slide that forward. And that's the part that's kind of like a Beretta, kind of like a regular pistol. And that comes right off. And then you can pull out the recoil springs and guide rods. And that's it. That's all you have for pieces. Not bad, right? So let's take a look at the internals of the lower assembly or your frame assembly. All steel, all beautiful. Just gorgeous. And I did clean this and oil this and such. Still a little dirty because I can't get all of it, but I didn't feel like going too crazy. All the weight, I'll tell you, is in that and in the barrel. This is a little bit lighter. You have your dual recoil spring guide rod. This is the barrel, 44 mag. Nice thing is with these, you can switch the 50 mag or 50 AE Action Express out instead of the 44 mag. Switch out this, switch out the magazines, you're good to go. You don't even have to change the bolt or anything. If you go to the 357 Magnum, you do have to switch out the bolt. You'll see the grooves where it catches the bolt. And the barrel, big, huge barrel. You can almost fit your finger in there. Here is the upper slide. See the internals, just like any other pistol right there. But you, you have that bolt right here, which is the different portion. And this piece, which comes off. See how that rotates around? Come out, there we go. Rotates around, comes out, rotate it back. That's the part that catches the front of that recoil spring and guide rod assembly. So, we want to put this back together. As usual, you're going to reverse the process. So you're going to take your lower and your upper, slide them back together. You'll notice you got these little suckers down there. You're just going to push them down, get that on there now. You're going to want to get, you'll notice you have a raised part on that recoil spring and guide rod. So what you're going to do there is you're actually going to put them in kind of like that. See how that hooks in there? So let's get that in there. It's easier to do if you do it all ahead of time, but you want to it's hard, hard to do on camera. I'll show it to you this way. You want to drop it in, kind of like this, with the notched portion in the front. Do 
you're gonna put the slide on the front. Now you notice it gets kind of hung up right there. See how the notch is? You're gonna pull that forward a little bit with the other one, bend it down. And when you're bending it down, you'll notice you have that hole right there. Make sure that little guy's around that way. Bring it down, catch it in the hole, pull it back. And if you do it right, which I don't always do, but there we go. You catch it, you hear that noise, we're good to go, we're in business. So after that, you're gonna take your barrel and you'll see this groove right here. You're gonna drop this portion through that groove in the barrel there, see that? How it comes together, push it together and pull this lever back up. That's it. Now you're good to go. Easy to take apart, easy to clean. Uh, any issues that you have with this in the field, it's, you could usually, it's almost always an out of battery issue, which is, again, slide us back ever so slightly. So when you're shooting, you'll see a little glip, a little gap here. You don't want there to be any gap. So when it's doing that, I just give it a little smack on the back like that, puts it back in battery, continue shooting. But again, proper grip, training, practice with it, and you'll have less and less and less issues with that until you don't have any, or very, very rare. Uh, nice thing, uh, now it's not really made to be ambidextrous at all. Your safety is on both sides. Slide stops only on one side. Magazine release is only on the left side. So it's made for righties. And you'll see you have your eight round magazine. Give it a good smack. You don't have to smack it that hard, it's in. Leave that gap. Notice how you, see how that moves, there's a little bit of space. Leave that space there, that's normal. You want it to hang free. It wiggles, it makes a noise, you want that. If you try to secure it, put it in all the way, you'll jam the firearm. It's very particular in how it wants. Just letting it hang just like that is perfectly fine because then once you hit the button, it shoots the mags right out, you have nothing to worry about. But all in all, I'm absolutely in love with this firearm. I have been for a long time now. I think everybody should have one, even though they're super expensive. <laughs> but uh, you'll see there's no slide serrations, or uh, slide, wow. There are no serrations or grooves on the front of the trigger guard. You don't really need one. It's such a big firearm as it is, you just wrap your hand around it. It's like, it's kind of like grabbing onto a giant fence post. <laughs> it's pretty big. But I love this thing. How about you guys out there? Do you like it? Do you enjoy these? Do you have one of your own? Do you have it in a different caliber? I've fired these in 44 and 50 so far. I have not fired a 357, but I heard it's smooth and beautiful. But, yeah, let me know your experiences down in the comment section. And let me know, do you like it? Do you like these? Are you thinking about getting one? What's your opinion on them? You gotta let me know that, too. Do you have the older models, or are they worse, better than the newer models? Because, honestly, I love the Mark 19. But, that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I always love showing these, uh, helping anyone out if they want to purchase one, or if they're thinking about it, kind of gives you an idea of what to expect and what to get into. That's the whole point of why I do these videos. I enjoy helping people out and kind of showing off the uh, the firearms that come through the house <laughs> and because uh, I kind of buy and sell. And if I don't like it, I get rid of it. If I do like it, I keep it. Um, every now and then I get a buddy that'll talk me into selling something, so I do. It just happens. But yeah, um, I just enjoy showing these. I enjoy talking about them. And I enjoy helping people that are really looking into getting a new one. So Hey, maybe this helped you want to purchase a new one. If it did, let me know, because I love these things, and I'd love to see any other owners out there, too. But that's all I have for you. I hope everybody out there stays safe, because I know we're still under partial quarantine, and I hope everyone out there also has a great week, great weekend, and everything like that. <laughs> but we will talk to you again next time. You have a good one.